Hey there, Mission Control. Well, today I want to give you an update on where we're at with the bottoms up watering installation and testing that we're doing. Let's get started. So we have the, uh, what is this? Four foot by four foot infinity series by Active Aqua uh, grow table here that we've put in. So we have one, two, three sections for 12 feet total. This is on lane two. And here I am standing at lane three where we also have one of the beds put in place. Now we're gonna put two sets of beds in, this one here and one here, uh, so that we can have four total uh, microgreen grow beds going. Now a cool thing about these trays, we didn't know about them when we first started. So it's just amazing the amount of information that's out there these days. Uh, even with the internet, you think it'd be easier to find stuff, but I think what's happened is there's so much information out there, you can't find everything. But these are really cool, really nice. Uh, they're designed for this purpose, so that's even better. And they also make them bigger. So I think that for our upper grow uh, beds here, which are going to be behind us, all this stuff down here, we can actually put aquaponic beds up here or even use these as like a, a not... We could put a floating raft system in these and actually fill it full of aquaponic lettuce if we wanted to and just have a constant flow system uh, and a drain for aquaponics. Now right now these are microgreens, they're not aquaponics, but just talking about the future. Back on lane two, we actually have uh, just normal well water coming up here, which is nice and clean. And we're doing some experiments uh, that we'll tell you about in the future here with uh, those. But uh, on lane three, we actually have aquaponic water running up to it to test that out. You know, sometimes it's hard to say when you're wrong uh, and you make mistakes. In this case, it's one that I got to own up to, and that is when it comes to leveling these guys. Um, hindsight being 2020, the footings, we, 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 let's back up. We redid the footings on every lane except for lane two, but it doesn't really matter. Um, when we put the footings in, we leveled everything, forward, back, left, right, everything was leveled. But with settling, we're getting a lot of movement occurring. Uh, and quite frankly, I think my leveling was not as good as it should have been. So now we have to deal with that and compensate. So what I've done is I'm just cut pieces of a uh, PVC pipe here, one inch PVC pipe, and I raised the racking up underneath so that the uh, grow table is nice and level because the racking's level under it and leveled it all out. So uh, leveling being hugely important for these types of tables to work, this has introduced some challenges. Um, if we keep getting settling, then this, this will make it difficult for everything to fill and drain correctly. But right now we got it at a good enough point, but this is something to keep an eye on. And again, uh, in the future, if I were to do a, a setup like have one again, uh, all the footings I would spend a lot of time on uh, to really make sure they're sunk down in the ground a long way um, so that settling wouldn't be an issue and that they were all perfectly level. Uh, or that I had the ability to adjust everything. Um, well, I'd probably do both, make it as level as I could and then give my abil myself the ability to adjust things. But here we are, this is what we got, so we gotta make it work. All right, so drainage on these beds is something that's hugely important. We do not want standing water. Now, they make drains for these beds. They're called ebb and flow drains. And what happens, there, there's two pieces of it. There's an overflow, which we do need to install in these. And then there's the inlet. Now, overflow is just you set the height, and if the water gets up that high, it just drains uh, so you never flood. And then you have your uh, filling port, which goes in mounts into the bed and then the pump pumps the water up through the filling port and when it's done pumping the pump turns off by its design how these beds are designed and the water flows back down and back through the pump in reverse and it's cool because it kind of cleans out the pump and everything and the water in the bed will drain back through there but the uh, the challenge here is that the way that those beds are set up they don't mind if there's a little bit of water left behind and I'm having a really hard time finding a flush mount uh, drain um, went to the hardware store and they sell them for sinks and I think that's what I'm going to end up doing is putting a uh, sink drain on this and then dropping the pipe. This pipe right here is actually the drain pipe from up top. What I did right now for the meantime is I just drilled a quarter inch hole in the uh, bottom of the grow bed and letting it drain down through this pipe so the water doesn't splash everywhere right into the aquaponics bed. I think that's totally acceptable for these trials that we're doing with this 
but uh, I kind of don't like that as my long-term solution. Uh, but the good news is with the quarter inch hole, our fill rate is greater than the drain rate, so we do fill. Um, the, the well bed takes about five minutes to fill. The aquaponic bed takes about 20 minutes to fill. Uh, just different uh, flow rates on both of those is, is the reason why. A lot more pressure on the, uh, the well than on the aquaponics. So, uh, gonna have some stuff. Figuring out the plumbing here is one of those things that I, I'm gonna do. And also, as we think about it, uh, the well water is a cool experiment, uh, but every time we fill one of the beds with water and then we drain it in the aquaponic system, we're raising the level of water in the fish tanks. And in the summer, that would probably be fine, but in the winter, that means eventually we're gonna get to the point where we have more water than what we need, so then you're gonna have to drain the fish tanks a little bit. Or you're gonna have to run drains into the main drain system of the building and get it out of the building. So those are some things that we're going to, have to consider. But right now, I'm leaning that the aquaponic water is actually going to be really good for us. Uh, as long as it doesn't touch the edible part of the plants, then uh, we'll also be good because that's aquaponics. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Well, yesterday I did an initial test with uh, cocoa core here. And I put this tray in and then I let it sit in there. I filled it. I'm trying to get you close so you can actually see here. Uh, you can kind of see how wet it is. This actually sat, uh, it, it had the water and, in it and then it drained and I just let it get to the very bottom of the tray, just really close to the bottom here. And the wicking effect, the capillary effect here, really took over and all this cocoa core is really, really wet. And this has actually sat overnight um, and it's still pretty wet. It sat overnight without water on it. So uh, really good stuff I think is happening here. We just need to get it all dialed in. Another part of what we have to dial in is automation for this stuff. So some choices that I have, I could put an, uh, another pump in the system to run the upper beds, essentially uh, drop it down into the aquaponics and then run aquaponic water up here, which would give me more pressure. And then I just create a single automation unit for it. Uh, that has a relay for 120 volt power to the pump, or I get a 12 volt pump. Uh, not a bad idea. Then I need a 12 volt power supply off of 120. So in the end, you might as well just get 120. It'd be easier to wire. Uh, anyway, uh, or I could connect into uh, the main computer system here and actually run everything uh, as uh, for this the actual aquaponic water. Uh, so I'd have to have an the relay, the 16 channel relays, uh, which I have plenty of, there's plenty of space there to control, let's say another pump. That's, I think that's a good idea. I think I'm gonna do that. Man, you guys are awesome. <laughs> so, uh, what I just did in my head is I figured out that I'll use the 16 channel relay, which means I don't have to redo any automation. I just need to run another uh, 120 volt uh, plug panel here, like what I did for the lights. Uh, and then drop a second pump in and control that pump that way and, and actually have it go up and down. And, or I could even do two pumps, one for each bed, do it different times, do it simultaneously. Um, and I think that should work pretty nice. And that gives us redundancy, right? Because two, one went down, not both of them would be down. I'll think about that some more. Curious to know what your thoughts are, but that's the game plan so far right now with automation. Live, brought to you live by The Real Martian. So there you have it. Uh, currently we have the two uh, trays in right now. Uh, leveling, drainage, plumbing, automation, still things that we need to deal with. We have two more trays coming. Uh, that will be on bed two uh, of each lane two and three. Uh, so we'll have a total of four microgreen grow trays when it's all said and done. And I think personally that these could also be used for aquaponic floating systems, a little raft system, so you can actually grow your lettuce up top here. I think that might be a really cool thing to do. And that frees up the media beds for the higher stature plants, plants that grow deeper in, and, and need have more stuff up above uh, the ground. I think that would work pretty cool, pretty well. And uh, on temperature update and insulation, so insulation is doing pretty good right now today. It's about 50 degrees Fahrenheit outside. We actually have turned the heat up in the building. I think I set it to, what is it, 68? Yeah, I'm looking at th thermostat here. Uh, went up to 68 degrees during the day and 60 degrees at night, so increased it just a little bit. 
uh, but every little bit costs a lot. So we don't want to put it up higher than we have to. Um, but it hasn't turned on at all in the last, boy, almost two hours. Uh, and it's cloudy outside. So really happy with how that's going. That's nice. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Patreon. In the meantime, this is The Real Martian. 